Hey, in the 1860s, there was the germ theory, which meant there's something invisible that can, can lead to diseases. And then antiseptics were developed by Joseph Lister, which meant they could start cleaning uh, instruments that were used in surgery. So science is beginning to understand that there's something that you can't really see too well with your, with your eyes that gets on things such as uh, surgical instruments and they need to be cleansed. So that's Joseph Lister about 1867. Then Robert Koch will come along 1876 and show that germ theory existed. It really was true. Then by 1881, there will be the discovery of bacteria by Robert Koch. All right. So now bacteria is, is to blame for a lot of diseases. All right. So what's going to happen is that the hoaxers will then come about with their own hoaxes due to the discovery of, guess what? Viruses, 1892. Now the viruses are hoaxes, okay? Because they are submicroscopic. Now, if you went back to the germ theory and the bacteriology, okay? in 1881 that means you can see them with the microscope now what's going to happen is that this yo-yo is going to come along here in 1892 and discover viruses and remember virus is just a latin word that means secretion of poison and it has no plural so this is incorrect so they're borrowing a Latin term and they're sort of deputizing it to create an entire new field. It is submicroscopic, which means the microscopes of the day can't pick it up. Now, later on, we're going to have uh, folks are going to claim they have an electron microscope and they can see these things. So the understanding of electron microscope is questionable. Questionable because this now gives these folks the opportunity to tell you anything and everything under viruses. So we're going to now look at a hoaxer that runs one of these electron microscopes and I want you to very carefully observe uh, how she speaks and how she stumbles, okay? Remember, she's someone that's running one of these electron microscopes and wants to talk to you about viruses. A virus is a submicroscopic infectious agent. Um, that means it's rip. Look at the smile. Hey, look at that smile. It's submicroscopic means that you can't see it with your microscopes. Look at the smile. Really, really small, so it's submicroscopic. We can't see them with a normal light microscope. You have to use very high resolution microscopy, which is electron microscopy, to see them. They're infectious. They will make people sick. Okay, looky, 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 looky. What do you see here? What is this? What is this? This is a cartoon, look. This is something you would have seen on Saturday morning cartoons, look. Look, these two are running. This is a cartoon. Can you see it? Can you see the figure here and the figure here? Now this is what they're seeing in these electron microscopes. Life cycle is based on infecting a cell, so they infect all cellular life. Okay, now they infect a cell, which means they've got some means of propulsion or something, so they must be alive, right? Oh no, they're not, they're not alive, but they're alive. Uh-huh. Now watch how, she, watch how she stumbles and mumbles and fumbles. They cannot exist on their own. They cannot replicate. Um, that's make more of themselves unless they're within another cell that is they're parasitic and they will infect all cellular life that's animals, plants and bacteria 
and so see they they infect bacteria so now now you've got you've got you've got the possibility of, of viruses on anything anything within the viruses every one of those groups of animals will have viruses that will be specific to them and are very unlikely to infect others the viruses that infect bacteria that looks a little like something you might say like Sputnik <laughs> some type of uh, thing that's launched into outer space doesn't it <laughs> does that really look like something that attacks your body or does it attack your mind are unlikely to infect plants or infect animals and all the other combinations. They don't feed. That's one of the things that distinguishes viruses from other organisms is that they're almost like on the edge of life. They're almost not alive and not dead. They're almost alive and not dead. They're almost alive and not dead. But they're not alive, right? They entered a body and they entered cells, but they're not alive. Well, how the heck did they get in there if they're not alive? Well, they're not alive, but they're almost, not almost dead. Hey, come on, pick up on the double talk. Now watch, we're gonna see some smirking here. So they don't take in nutrients and they do not grow and increase in biomass in a normal way that we would think of a plant. Oh, look, bacteria. there's your 69. Looky, 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 looky. <laughs> looky, looky, looky. <laughs> there's your 69. <laughs> there's a four. <laughs> come on, people. Or an animal increasing in size by to uptake of nutrients. They simply replicate by hijacking all the machinery. Now, a hijacker, in my view, is an individual who's alive, but these things are not alive, right? But they hijack. They they get into cells, but they're not alive. Right? within another cell. It has a very small amount of its own genetic material that takes over the cell and it stops that cell doing what it was doing before and makes that cell begin to make more of its cell. It's not alive, but it makes that cell. Of the virus and only the virus until the cell ruptures and releases millions of copies and then those... There, there's your, there's your uh, alchemy. There's your, you're getting something out of nothing. Okay, you're getting something out of nothing. Now only God creates out of nothing. Now the devil tries to, in your mind. Okay, you got a whole bunch of stuff out of nothing. Remember, it wasn't really alive, but it's not. But it's almost not dead or something. I don't know what, how in the world she just got. <laughs> Copies will then, of the virus will then go and infect all the cells just adjacent to itself. Okay, it's just a little like a Xerox copier machine. You just put it on the, on the uh, surface there and next thing you know, you press the button and you've got hundreds and hundreds of them, whatever the, whatever the heck they're supposed to be. Remember, it's their, it's their branch of science. So you can do whatever you want with it, just like a little child when you played games, mind games, and pretended and had imagination. And so the infection continues, and that's why you can get very rapid and very serious disease because you get usually a lot of tissue damage, or the cells actually try and make different compounds to protect themselves, and you can get a lot of immune response reactions, which in part would also make us sick from viruses. Antibiotics do not work against viruses, and that's because viruses do not grow. There are some antiviral Hey, 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 I showed this on another slide. What do we have right here? What kind of a symbol is that? Hey, I'm not going to get X-rated on this film. Antibiotics don't work, huh? 
Isn't that interesting? The only thing that works is a vaccine. Hmm. Wow. Therapies available and many more being developed, especially for you know difficult diseases like HIV and for bird flu, things like that. Any therapy that is going to interfere with a virus. Right, and the drug companies make loads of money. There's your 69 again. Is by its very nature also going to interfere with normal cellular activity. So therefore, there's always a down, downstream. Notice the background. Notice the, the this chart behind her, uh, filled with very variety of colors. And notice it replicates the human eye. This is to go right into your temple. This nonsense. In risk of something going wrong. Well, I hope that was educational for you, and I hope you understand that basically all viruses are nonsense. They, they don't exist, period. And that includes the one the doctor says, oh, I think you have a virus. You must have the flu that's going around. How many times have you heard that in your lifetime? All right? You are sick, period. No viruses. They don't exist. It's all nonsense. And that's why they can hoax nonsense the world right now, because they invented this virology crap soon after the discovery of bacteriology, which is truly what happens to folks, uh, the bacteria and so forth, but not viruses. But they just invented it shortly after bacteriology, so they would have a means of hoaxing the world and also making lots of money on phony vaccines. Thank you for watching the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord Jesus gives to us his truth and the ability to discern true from false. Thank you for watching.